He's been at the helm of Equatorial Guinea for 30 years. It's likely that Sunday's presidential vote will put him back in office for another seven. I began by asking President Obiang whether he ever intends to give up power. We have to look in the annals of history. We have to look back and see where this country was, what we've been able to do with this country, how we've been able to conduct the gradual development of this country from slum to riches, and what this party has done for this nation and what this party through me has achieved for this nation. That's the reason why the people and the nation are totally and fully convinced that what we've done so far is highly credible, that they have not yet found an alternative. This alternative which will convince the people that rest on the shoulders of someone else within our party ranks will give them that option. But up to this moment, the option has not surfaced. Therefore, I, as a servant within my party ranks, I will always accept when this will come up in a democratic manner, I will relinquish. Obiang admits Equatorial Guinea has very strict security laws in place to guard against attempts by foreign entities to grab the country's oil wealth from the hands of its people. There have been two recent attempted coups, including one allegedly backed by the son of the former British Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher. Are you saying that the coup attempts that we've seen in Equatorial Guinea were attempts to get control of the country's oil resources? Evidently. For certain, we have discovered without any iota of doubt that the bottom line is that these people who were at the forefront of carrying out these attempts to destabilize our nation had entered into secret accords with other unknown powers whose ambition mostly is to lay their hands on the resources of the in its totality or partially. But while President Obiang accuses others of trying to steal Equatorial Guinea's resources, there have been investigations into whether his own family has stolen money. Equatorial Guinea today has such a very strict control over her resources that there is hardly a way, a mechanism by which anyone in the country will be able to deviate not even one cent. Corruption in Equatorial Guinea would be almost impossible to detect anyway because detailed government finances are closed to the public. But the fact that President Obiang agreed to this interview, the first with foreign media in years, is perhaps a sign of his growing willingness to tolerate scrutiny from outsiders. Evandege, Al Jazeera, Malabo, Equatorial Guinea.